What's up, guys? It's Beast, and it's 5.2, and there's a lot of people crying about Warriors, and there's a lot of tears saying they're shit when, um, if you played in Season 5 or 11, you really know what shit is. This is, Warriors are, I think, better than 5.1, actually. I like them a lot better. Um, they're a lot more fluid. They're a lot more comfortable to play. A lot of Warriors will say differently because they're probably Flavor of the Month faggot rerollers, so I'm talking to you, assholes. Um, I've played Warriors since the beginning of fucking time, um, so screw you. Um, I hate people that are like, oh, you're a warrior, OP. Like, uh, you don't know how long I played this fucking class to be OP. <laughs> they, they were only OP a couple. They always are OP, like, in the beginning of expansions, it seems like. Then they get over-nerfed, which I wouldn't say they're over-nerfed. They're just nerfed. They're not over-nerfed. I think they're fine. Anyways, I'm not going to sit here and be like, okay, guys, well, Warbringer got a buff and um, slam buffed. And stuff like that. You guys can read. I'm not going to hold your hand. You can wipe your guys' own ass. Um, I'll go over rotations and whatever the fuck and ramble in another video. Right now, I'm just going to go over talents and glyphs. Uh, what you should use and when. And what's good and what's not. And if you're gay or not. Ha, that rhymed. I just thought that on. Did that rhyme? I don't know. Anyways, let's continue. So, as you people fucking know, Warbringer got buffed. It's an 8 second slow after the stun. But the stun DRs with everything and its mother good thing about Warbringer is Blitz works with it. So let's go over here and show ya. So okay, pretend this is a DPS in Arena. Mm. And this is a healer. Mm. It's gonna put the healer on focus. Mm. Now we're gonna charge. Now watch. The stun is on both targets and so is the slow. But let's let I bet you didn't know this. So look, I'm gonna root staggering shout. I'm gonna go over staggering shout in a minute, but look. Staggering shout, I'm gonna throw my weapon at this one. The root didn't break! Oh my god, it's a miracle. Okay. Okay, I'll go over I'll go over staggering shout nerf or bug in a minute. So uh second wind um got nerfed. The rage sucks. I really don't believe it's three percent uh held per second. I really think it's less than that. Mainly because I guess a battle fatigue is in the game. Every player has somewhat of an MS, it reduces all healing by thirty percent, so it affects second wind. Also classes with MS like warriors, rogues, hunters. Uh, monks. I might be missing some. What else does I miss? Um, it also stacks with battle fatigue. So, yeah. Um, what else stacks with it? Nerf Strike stacks with it. Uh, nerf Strike got a buff. A lot of rogues don't use Nerf Strike, though. Um, it reduces healing by 10% along with the 50% damage component. Most rogues use uh, combat readiness, though. So, anyways. That's that. Oh. Okay, we're going to turn that off. Fucking... Boku Bowser, son of a bitch. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I love the guy. Uh, anyways, so, um, yeah, staggering shout. Okay, let, 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 I'm going to put a bleed on the target, and I'm going to put a, a root on the target now, or a uh, slow. Now I'm going to root, look at the roots up, and the bleed's going to take, boom, the root fell off. The root breaks on damage now. I don't know if this is a bug. I really hope it is, because this renders the ability fucking useless if it breaks off bleed damage. Like, instantly. Doesn't even tick maybe twice. It break, breaks off fucking bleed damage. Makes it fucking useless. So, if that goes through, these abilities are pretty much the only ones worth a damn. Because there's always going to be a fucking dot on whoever you're peeling. Some form of dot. Maybe if there's not in, like, twos. But other than that, Staggering Shout is dumb. I opened a ticket about it. We'll see what goes on. But right now, Staggering Shout is doo-doo. Shockwave got a little nerf, as everybody knows. I shouldn't even have to say it. But, good thing about... The last component to the talent, causing damage to three or more targets, lowers the cooldown of the next shockwave by 30 seconds. So, a pet zoo, uh, a hunter's zoo with all this shit. Um, warlocks, imp swarm bullshit. Um, DK pets, warlock pets, all that stuff procs that. So, you can actually get back to 20 second cooldowns if you stun those targets. So, you know, the, the Jumanji zoos, the warlocks, shit. Um, a DK pet, say if it's a TSG, for instance, the warrior and the DK pet, because I'm pretty sure most DKs are going to be running holy. Unholy um, got a buff with their uh, reaping. They don't, ha is, they have a lot more runes to work with. I don't know the exact changes, but uh, yeah, unholy is a little bit better now, just because they're a lot more comfortable to play. Um, yeah, basically, you play unholy, get more necrotic stacks. GG. Um, so yeah. So if it's TSG, Unholy Pet, DK, Warrior, you get the the, sh the little 
20%. You get the 20 second shockwave again, which is good for peels. Um, so that's that. Uh, Dragon Sword is complete shit. It's like a slam crit on a one minute cooldown. Um, there is no CC component in it. It's garbage. It's a PvE ability. Don't use it in PvP or you're gay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is, isn't really that good. Don't worry about it. Bladestorm. Um, Bladestorm, uh, we'll go over another video, but I'm going to go over it real quick. I'll mention it in both. So Ring of Peace is going to be the bane of all melee cleaves, right? Ring of Peace is a new monk ability. Disarm silences every fucking thing you can't attack when it's on. Um, now that Bladestorm can't be disarmed, Bladestorm is pretty much a way around Ring of Peace. Um, you can Bladestorm in it, and it will actually still do damage because it can't be disarmed now. Little known fact. Because fuck Ring of Peace, you OP piece of shit. Um, Bladestorm's really good ex uh, in certain situations. It's unpeelable damage. So comps that can peel you a lot, disarm you a lot. Example, any fucking monk team under the sun because of the 45 second cooldown, they're going to do it anyways. Um, a lot of good mages are just going to spam sheep on you when you're fucking bursting, if they're not tunneling you anyways. Um, Bladestorm's really good. But remember, hunters have... Hunters, mages, warriors, DKs can grip you, uh, priests can life grip. A lot of classes can get out of Bladestorm. You gotta remember that. A lot of people have hippity hoppities, jumpy away stuff. So you gotta make sure those things aren't cooling before you Bladestorm, or you'll just pop your Bladestorm and it'll be negated. Which is really hard because it's a 1 5 pin minute cooldown, and a lot of those abilities are within the 25 second to 10 to 15 second mark. So there's a very small window you can actually do these things. But remember, Bladestorm can't be disarmed. Um, yeah, so remember that. Shockwave. Shockwave's still good for control. Um, the nerf was needed, I think. And remember about the pet thing. It's really handy for getting 20 second shockwaves. Um, safeguard's still really good. I would probably always use it. Vigilance, PvE. Mass Battle Flight, good, but it reflects useless shit like imp, fire bolts, random dots, useless shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, doesn't that way safeguard has more utility than has way more utility short cooldown. Bloodbath, bloodbath is shit, and I'll explain why. A lot of people like bloodbath now because they want to run bloodstorm. That's what they call it. Um, which I'll explain to you why it's shit. Okay, so say you run bloodstorm, say you run bladestorm, whatever. Bladestorm usually hits for maybe 40, 50k crit on a resilient target. So you take, we'll do the max 50. 50% or 30% of 50k. But you gotta remember, so, so the 50k was affected by resilience, yada yada yada. But then the 30% of that damage is affected by resilience. So it, then it puts another dot. The dot is affected by resilience. You gotta remember that. So it's kind of double dips resilience if you think about it. Same thing with Touch of Karma. Touch of Karma double dips resilience. You hit the target, you're affected by his resilience, and it bounces back to you, and the dot's affected by your resilience. Kind of like that. There's a certain. That it double dips resilience, which doesn't make it do that much damage. So, the only thing Touch of Karma would really do a lot of damage to you if is if you swift eat them. Other than that, it doesn't do that much damage. So, Bloodbath is shit because Druids can shift out of it. Druids can get out of the slow, and since the bleed and the slow are in the same debuff, it removes the bleed. So, another reason why Bloodbath is shit. Stormbolt got a mini buff. It really doesn't do any more damage. It does pretty much the same damage. Nothing you're going to do amazing damage on. The immunity, permanently immunity stunts, that's for bosses. That's not a PvP mechanic. doesn't work with DKs that do uh, Icebound forward. It only works on boss mobs. Avatar, probably still going to use it. It aligns with Wreck now since Wreck is a 3 minute cooldown. It's the best man. I like having 3 minute bursts. It synergizes really well with a lot of people's bursts. A lot of people's bursts are 3 minutes. So, that's that. Um, so, that's talents. We'll go over glyphs real quick. Uh, Die by the Sword got a burf. Blitz works with uh, Warbringer, like I showed you. Death from Above got nerfed. Uh, Wreck Glyph got changed. If that's PvE, nobody gives a shit. Um, Alright. I did not mean to do that. Whatever. Fuck it. Just hit my focus macro. So, I'm going to show you Die by the Sword real quick. Dive of the Sword is re this, this ability alone makes Warriors really good versus melee cleaves. Now you gotta remember, this ability, this glyph, is not very good versus spellcasters because I guarantee you will not be able to spam overpower on a caster. 
just for the 20% extra damage reduction. People try to claim, oh, but it gives you 20% 20, 20 extra damage reduction. So what? Like, you, you could be LOSing, negating all damage. Like, it's not good to stand in the middle of a fucking field trying to overpower just to keep a goddamn fucking shitty 20% bark skin like buff up. It's not worth it. Don't use this glyph for his casters. If it's full caster cleave, do not fucking use this glyph. Use something else worth a damn. Maybe even shield wall fucking glyph. I don't know. You're definitely gonna have to use, or maybe like uh, bull rush, more rage. I don't know. Don't use Dive by the Sword versus Cast Cleave. You're gonna have to change glyphs all the time in the ring now, so get used to it. Also, maybe even talents. So that's what Blizzard wanted. Anyways, so let's get some stacks of Taste for Blood, really quick, and I'll show you how long I can keep it up. Let, let's let's add a timer too. Let's let's be all professional about this. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We're gonna wait till we get into that MS. Okay, we're popping it. I didn't start the timer. Yeah. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> I didn't start the timer. I'm fucking bad. I fucked up too. Damn it. This sucks. I don't lose it. Oh, I kept it. But pretty much you can, like, okay. That's just using MS. MS gives you taste for blood proc. So if you count into like a rogue evasioning, uh, a DK also parrying and dodging you, a lot of class, like a lot of the melee classes dodge and parry a lot. So you gotta keep that in mind. You get an overpowered proc every time that happens. So basically, you could do a fuck ton of damage to them by spamming overpower and using die by the sword, and you just don't take any damage unless you're stunned. So, or hit from the back. So remember, always face your target when you're doing this, or else you are stupid. Yeah, um, trying to keep this video short. Um, that's pretty much all the glyph changes. I'll go over the rotations in the next video. Try to go over them. Um, if I forgot anything, leave in the comments if you have any questions. Same thing with the next video. I try to explain things to the best I can. It's kind of hard to describe when you should slam. It's kind of you got to get a feel for them. Um, slam and overpower. Um, yeah, it, it's a lot different now. You want to uh, uh, just go to the other video. Go watch the other video. The link. Just go to the channel, or I'll link it in the corner where this recount shit is or something. We'll see. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for glyphs and talents. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments, and I will see you in the next video. I love you guys. Bye.